Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And our new app is out, and there are free puzzles on it. You can download the app free from the usual places, App Store, I think. Uh, well, it's certainly on App Store. I've checked that um, on mine. I can't check the Android one. Um, but anyway, the links are going to be under this video, although I don't know what they are yet. Um, and it is it is available. It's got um, seven free puzzles by Prasanna Sashadri, who is a brilliant constructor, just to sort of explain what the sort of puzzles we have are. Now, there is a new full um, paid for app available onto it, which is the Domino app. And there is, um, I think, a button to allow you to, in, within the settings, you can go there and restore your previous purchases to this app. This will be our, our one app to bind them all going forward. Um, I'm not sure how that works yet, but, you know, we're finding out as we go. But the, the app exists. It's new content from us, which we haven't had in this form for quite a while. So we're delighted it is available, at least on the App Store, yeah. And... Uh, certainly worth a look you know there's some free puzzles basically it's worth a look for anybody who can access puzzles in this way it's meant to be on steam as well um anyway it's available so check it out if you can and uh let us know what you think that would be great we it it will develop a bit over the next few days so we'll keep you updated basically um and that is the breaking news of obviously on patreon we have the monthly crossword. We have the equal sum lines pack by Joseph Neymar um, on Discord. There's always loads of stuff going on. And uh, you can, of course, get Sven Sudoku Pad and all of our other apps. Um, although maybe wait with them until we work out how you get them uploaded onto this new app. I think that's probably the best thing. Um, but check it out now. The first link under this video is to this puzzle, unless I put this link below the links to the new app. Anyway, this puzzle is called Peculiar Operations by Finest. It's clearly themed on the, the mathematical operations. The blue lines, well, together with these gray circles, don't miss them. They're giving us a, a plus, a minus, um, a multiplication sign and the traditional divide sign down there as well. So, I mean, Ed Sheeran would love this Sudoku, wouldn't he? He's, uh, has he done four albums of those titles or just three? I think he probably hasn't done minus, but I might be wrong about that. Um, anyway, negative connotations, I imagine. Anyway, the rules are these. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Now, along a blue line, each digit must be a multiple or factor of its neighbor. E.g., you could have a string of 71284, for instance, um, because seven is a multiple of one, which is a factor of two, which is a factor of eight, which is a multiple of four. Obviously, we're only using integers. Um, that doesn't need saying. So that's how the blue lines work. They're... Um, basically multiple lines and then we have and I mean they represent I think the multiplication and division aspects of this puzzle the killer cages represent additions because the numbers in the cages which can't include repeats add up to the total given so those six digits add up to 36 um, and these little circles oh no we've got two odd digits the gray circles here are odd digits and then these different circles represent the minus sign i think so the difference between these two digits is three so they could be seven and four for instance um the difference between these two is six etc so that's how it works fairly simple to understand um do give it a try on the link under the video if you're ed sheeran leave a comment if you're anybody else leave a comment but uh have fun uh this is by finest i think I think we have solved Finest before a year ago and I have a memory that I made some error while solving it and still put up the video. I don't, I mean, I don't think it finished erroneous, but I don't know. I don't know what my memory is telling me really. Anyway, do give this one a try. Let's hope I don't make an error because I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. 
And where do we start? These six differences are either one seven two eight or three nine. What does that do along the line? Not much. You see, one is a bit of an, an annoying digit on these blue lines because it can go anywhere. It can be a factor of any other number. Ah, OK, it's this eight cell line, isn't it? it or they all, these are all different. That's the point about these ones. Yeah, OK, so five and seven can only be next to one on a line. Right, what I'm just going to do quickly is do a little aid memoir. I'm not going to put one in, but for all the other digits, what numbers can they be next to on a line? I, this is not Sudoku. I'm just making a little aid memoir. So two can be a multiple of one or a factor of four, six or eight. Three can be next to one, six or nine. Four... One, two, or eight. Five, only one. This is the point I was getting to. Yeah, six can't go up. Seven, only one. Eight, one, two, and four. Nine, one, three. I reckon that's the, the full list. And now, okay, nine is quite constrained as well. Right, okay, what I'm going to say is, if five or seven is on this line, and one of them must be, because they can't both go up here, then it's got to be on the end of the line next to a one. So there's going to be a one in one of the penultimate positions on the line. And I think that one is going to be next to nine. Yes, the other of five or seven is going to have to go in this cell at the top off the line. So one of them is going, sorry, the other of the first of five or seven is going on the end of the line. One is going in one of those cells. Now nine must be on the line somewhere. Oh, could nine be on the end next to, th on the other end next to three? Then at that end would go nine, three, six, two. Oh, that is possible. Bother. Oh, well, it, the line runs through the 18 cage. Ah. Oh. So nine could be here next to three. Yes, and that would need a six to make up the cage. So that's certainly possible. Nine, three, six in the cage. Maybe the other makeups of the 18 cage are not possible. Yes, you couldn't have, this is interesting. You couldn't have nine, seven, two or nine, four, five in the cage because seven or five would be next to an impossible number. Yeah, the fact that one's in one of those positions means there's no one in this cage. There's not a single, there's not a one digit in it. Therefore, every digit in it is going to have to have a meaningful division into the next, or, or multiplication into the next number. So anyway, it, it can't, it could be 963 with a three in the center. Yeah, it can't be anything else with a nine. Now, can it be eight, six, four? It can't actually, because six doesn't have four or eight as one of its factors or multiples. So this has to be a nine, three, six cage with the three in the middle. It has to be, yes, that's good. Okay, six, nine around it. I probably don't need this anymore, but let me, I'll take this aid memoir away once I've figured out. Now, we said if nine, okay, I originally said if nine was on the line, it had to be between one and three. Now, I then modified that to nine could be on the end, but now it can't be on the end because it's in the cage. So nine is between three and one. So it must be down here with the one here. That's not a one. This is the five or seven that needs a one next to it. This is six. Now we've got, that must be two next to the six and then a, a four eight pair and I don't know the order. So I'm going to get rid of this aid memoir now. I've, I think I've used it enough. I mean, we might need it again on these other factors. Now, look at this 11 cage. It doesn't have a two, so it's not two nine. It doesn't have a three, so it's not three eight. 
doesn't have a six, so it's not five, six. The other combination that works is what it must be, a four, seven pair. Um, the difference thing up here, this could be two or eight or four. And it can't be two or eight or four. It can't be four or eight because they're a pair in the box. Oh, that's lovely. So that has to be a two. Have I got that right? Five is three away from two and eight. Seven is three away from four. Yes, that's a two. That's a five. That's a seven. Um, that's interesting. Now, how can we carry this forward? Do we need to use the other lines or this box? Or the, ah, ah, look, these have two differences. Right, so they're all the same parity and they're not even. How do I know that? Because the other three even digits that we could need to place in the row are two, four, and eight. And you can't string them together in a sequence with a difference of two because eight gets marooned. So these are all odd. Could color them. Um, ah, so that's even because it's one different from an odd number. So it can't be two, four, or six. That's eight. This is 9 or 7. So these form a sequence running downwards from 9 or 7. So they must include 5 and 7 in those cells. And therefore, we know what this is. It's a 4. Now, the other digits in the central box are 1, 5, and 9. They're all odd. So with a 2 difference, this is odd as well. And it can't be 5 or 7 because they're in those cells. It can't be one or nine because that doesn't have a two difference to any of those. So it's a three. Isn't that pretty? That's really clever. Very nice, finest. So this becomes a five. That's a five, seven, nine triple. This is now five or one. I don't actually know which one of those it is. This is even. It's three away from one, five or nine. Any even number will fill the bill there. So I'm not going to fill in anything. We've got a seven in one of those two cells by Sudoku. Ah, this can't be a nine three pair anymore. So it's either two eight that way round or a one seven pair. Now, what about this difference line then? Or, or not a difference line, a division line. I suppose you could always put one in the middle. Ah, right. What about this division line and this cell in particular? Oh, this is interesting. This can't be one anymore. That's why it's interesting. I think it has to be two. I'm just going to cheekily knit back in time and look at my aid memoir column and see which of the digits that's not one can have four numbers touching it. There it is. It is only two up at the top there, one, four, six, and eight. So that's what must be in the center of that X. So I'm going back, back forwards to where we got to. And this must be a two with one, four, six, and eight in the corners. That's lovely. That's really clever as a step. Um, this note, I can see that that's got four things touching it, but it doesn't have to be two because it could be one. So it is one or two, but anyway, we'll come back to that, I imagine, soon. Now we've got one, four, six, eight. So these others are three, five, seven, or nine. That one can't be three or nine. These can't be seven, and that one can't be five. Now with these one differences, this can't be a one anymore. It must be, oh, it must be even, and that must be even, so it's not a one. So one is now in one of these two cells. Now let's have a look at this little grouping. Yeah, okay. Since one in the bottom row is now in one of those two cells and seven can't be in this sequence of three consecutive digits, it's either two, three, four, three, four, five, or four, five, six. So the central one is three, four, or five. But, oh lovely, this is an odd digit on the circle and this is a one difference from that, so it must be even. So it is a four. Oh, this, I love the way this puzzle works, that's really nice. So they, you get a three, five flanking the four on that sequence. You don't have a four at the bottom, 
you do have a four at the top, either on top of a five there or a three there. Now, you've also got a three five there, so this is nine, and that's not, and that's not. Oh, look, we've got a two looking down at that cell, so two in the row is there. This also can't be eight because of that. So eight must be in one of these two cells. They must now be a one eight pair. Eight can't be in these cells, so they're a four six pair. One of them is touching the seven below, which is obviously the six. The other one is touching either five, the other one's a four, touching either five there or three there. So I don't know that now. Do I know this now? Yes, this is six. Six, one, seven, nine. So four in this box must be here. Remember this four, six pair. That is three or five, which is forming a pair with that. Now, this odd digit is one or seven, because it can't be either of that three, five pair or nine. This is two or eight, because it sees everything else. Oh, two in this row. There's only one place. It's there. This is a one, seven, eight triple now. Right, now, can we determine this? This line has got six and nine on it. And surely they have to be joined by three. It can't have a one or a two. Yes, we put a three in the middle again. Six and nine on the flanks. That's become a five. This becomes a seven. So five there, three there. Four must be touching the five. Six on the seven. We can't deal with the one eight pair. This hasn't got resolved. This can't be seven, one now. Ah, it could still be two, eight or three, nine. Bother. Oh, that's become a five. This we must know it's an eight. Right, the five there looks into the central cell, puts five there, one, nine, which is three away from six, which still doesn't sort that out. This is now a 3-7 pair. Now this 36 cage, well, it's missing three of the nine digits. The nine digits, which always, this is a secret, but they always add up to 45. Therefore, the three digits it's missing add up to nine, but it's not missing a four, so they're not two, three, four. So they're either one, two, six, or one, three, five missing which I can tell means there's either a two or a five in those cells, but I can't tell what that is. Um, maybe that was an unnecessary excursion. Oh, look, two, one are a pair here, so I can fill them in. One, two, four, eight here. Now, seven, one, three, two, nine. This is made up of, well, eight can't go on it because it can't go with seven or nine. This is like a white property dot. Five must go on this. And five can't go here on the blue line because it would have to be next to ones both sides. So five must go here. This is four or six on the line, which could still go two, four, eight, or two, six, three, or other things. This is four, six, or eight. Um, how about this total? Ah, eight can't be there. Four, eight, and four. Five. Ah, now we're not missing one, three, five out of this cage. We're missing one, two, six. So the numbers in it are four, eight, five, and three, seven, and nine. That must be the seven. That's the three, and this is the nine, and we are away now. Three must be next to six, uh, which is next to two or one, but this can't be a one, seven pair. So this is a two, eight pair. That's a four, that's a one. Four and eight are done, and eight and one at the bottom. And I've done most of the last five columns now. This is a one, six, nine triple. Now, this can't be a two, so that's a one in the middle, at which point this whole plus sign is valueless because everything can touch a one. But that one is not valueless in itself. It points at this cell, which becomes a seven. Um, we've got all sorts of triples here. Four, five, eight. One, two, three. I'm just taking out the impossibles. And six, seven, nine. Haven't used the 18 cage. 
nine six one. Okay, so one there has actually fixed this triple nine six one. The that is five or eight, and that is four five or eight. This is a three seven nine triple. Oh, hang on, the central one can't be three or seven, so that's nine. I might look at this cage in a moment. I'm just, well, no, let's just have a look down column two first. That's become a two. That's not nine. So this is, oh, and that must be six, in fact, now. Four and eight are left. Four, eight form a pair in row three. So this is a two, six pair. Okay, let's have a look at that. 10 there, these add up to eight. That can't be seven, it's three and five. Straightforward, helpful. Finishes off column five, column two as well. And I think all these triples are about to unwind and we're gonna finish. Uh, or they're all pairs now, in fact. Seven there gives us a nine, seven. That looks down at nine, six. That looks back up at two, six. That looks down, I think I've missed pencil mark that. Should be one or three. Yes, I can do that from the three in the corner, losing its religion up there. And we get eight and one. And that is the solution to peculiar operations. Peculiar, I think not because they're mathematically peculiar, but because they each have their own peculiar function within this puzzle. It's a very nice puzzle, very neatly put together, not too difficult, quite approachable, I'd say. And thank you so much to Finest for sending it in. Really enjoyable stuff. And thank you to you, as always, for watching us. Do check out that uh, the new app. There is going to be a link under this video. And hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.